Hi everyone, it's Suzanne from sunstampin.com and today I have a really big box that I made with the envelope punch board. It's a, <clears throat> a sizable box. It is definitely um, bigger than five inches. Um, I did a little bit of a close here, but I'm not terribly fond of the close, so I'll show you a different method. Um, this works just fine. It's just a little... I don't know, not finished as well as I would like. But yeah, that's how it closes. And actually, it's quite secure. Um, and it does help everything to be nice and square. And you can see on the inside. Okay. So, what you're going to need is an envelope punch board. I got interrupted when I was doing this. So, initially so this is my second time filming so excuse the um we're, we're going to pretend that it doesn't have a score line okay kids all right so the first thing we do is we're going to line up this corner with the big number four which is a four inch score we're going to punch okay pretend that crunched and we're going to score now don't worry you're going to go off the edge that's totally fine don't give it another thought. So we're going to turn and we're going to line up this corner again with the four. We're going to punch and score. Turn it over again. Did I say that this was a 12 by 12? I think I forgot. Just a 12 by 12 um, whoops, piece of cardstock or you can use designer series paper. You know me, I like the cardstock and I like decorating with DSP. And also it's not terribly expensive. Whoops! So that's what happens when you go over the edge and you make a little whoopsie. Okay, so we have, um, we should have four recesses here and four score lines. So what we're going to do is flip the card over again and we're going to start at four. We're going to punch and score, and I have just met up with one of my with one of my previous score lines. Okay, and we're going to do this again. Repeat. So four and punch and score. Four punch and score. It's very repetitive, isn't it? And this is the last one. Four and score. Okay. So, <clears throat> you can see that we actually have one side of the box, uh, or the square anyway, of the box, and these would be the sides that flip kind of over, um, and all we are actually missing is um, some score lines on these bits here. So, easy enough to, um, to manage. We're going to line up, I call this the little sundial or the little dial. We're going to match that up with um, our score line here. And you know you're going to be true when this little indentation here fits up with the, um, the other recess, I guess. So we've already, have we scored? Yes, we've already scored or punched. So all we need to do is score. So line that baby up check here. There we go. Lining it up two more times. <clears throat> Excuse me. And last one. Perfect. All right, can you guess what I'm going to do next? Yep, fold and burnish. Oh, and I wanted to... Oh, Actually, no, we're going to round the corners. Okay, boop. So it doesn't matter which way you start folding, you just want to make sure that you're, you do give everything a nice, crisp, edge Good. 
Coolio. All right, so it doesn't matter which, this is pretty square-ish, so it doesn't actually matter which where um, you wanna start cutting, but um, what we are going to do, what I'm going to do here is we're going to cut on these score lines and these score lines. If you don't want to cut, you can fold that in and match those two guys up like that. But then what I find is that you've got this little extra piece and it, if you wanted to use this as a gift to actually hold, um, it actually is quite difficult um, to put anything inside. So I didn't want to do that that way. You could, but I'm not going to. I like the cutting and the gluing of a box. So I'm going to cut those two there and then come round to the other side. Now for me, that is almost too much paper to even have on the side. So I'm going to snip it off. And perhaps I'll use these little extra pieces on another project somewhere. And if you didn't want to cut them down and you wanted extra support, you could totally do that too. So I'm going to use my sticky strip. And right close to the fold line. on all sides. Now oh, I'm actually, you could do this entire box and then have it close a completely separate way. Um, and maybe one day I will show you on a video how to do that, maybe with a smaller box, because this is kind of a monster size box and as you know when you're working with sticky strip you must burnish it or else um, sometimes it actually if you don't burnish it well and you go to lift up with your uh, paper piercer you will find that it will take off some of your card where it might lift up it's not completely stuck down okay Oop, I'm fighting so you're gonna take your cut edge to your scored edge and we're going to get a nice seam there. Oops. Sometimes working with mammoth, mammoth projects, I struggle a little bit. Sometimes it's nicer to work with the dinky little ones, but I'll be honest, at Christmas time or birthday time, I don't get people dinky little gifts to put in the little dinky boxes. So I am making a conscious effort to make these boxes, to giving these boxes some actual size. And I hope you appreciate that. Actually, it reminds me of Chinese takeout right now. All right, so just to make sure that my sticky has stuck, I'm going to go in and bone fold just with my bone folder and give it a press down just to absolutely make sure that things are, it's going to be secure. All right, so. I'm going to shut it that way. Nope, maybe not. Maybe I'll shut it the other way. Yeah, that's better close. All right. So I'm just going to take a little pencil mark. And 
and I'm just going to snip. I'm hoping this is going to work. I thought about it and I went, instead of doing the little curve, which is what I've done on this one, but I actually really didn't like the finish. So what I did with that one is that I curved it a little bit as I cut it. So I wanted to do the little slit. Oh, work with me here to see if this would work a little bit and look a little neater. And it does look quite nice. They look the same. It's just that this to me was a little rough. So, all right, so I'm going to decorate the little box now. I am using the Sweet Taffy DSP and my cardstock was Rich Razzleberry and the DSP for this box is, let me check my notes, two and a half by four and seven eighths. And when you do this, you, um, especially with this particular, um, Uh, DSP, sorry, my brain got there for a second. Just want to make sure that the stripes are all going the same way. You don't want stripes going this way and that way. Or maybe you do. And if that's what you want to do, have fun with it. There we go. Okie dokie. So we're going to make this little um, tag. So I have my tag topper punch and because it's two little pieces of paper and they're thin I can put it in this but um, you're not supposed to put more than two in your um, pieces of cardstock so this is a tag topper and the tag topper is two inches and I think I'm just under three Then on this little guy, um, oh, I forgot to get out my rich razzleberry stamp. Ink, I should say. And I'm using the um, stamp set called Something to Say, and I'm using Seize the Cake because, as you've seen before, I quite like it. So this is generational stamp in everyone. So we're going to, oh, I'm hoping I'm straight. Stamp, breathe, stamp, breathe, stamp. So all I'm doing is breathing on this stamp and I obviously you see that I didn't, I'm just going for sort of like a little ombre um, look. And, oh my goodness, I forgot to get out my little sponge, and I actually don't know if I have a rich razzleberry. Oh, I do. Aha! Nicely done, Sue. All right, so I'm just taking my sponge, and I'm just going to soften that edge just a touch. I think it makes the world a difference, don't you? That's that. Now I want to lift that up just a touch, um, but not terrible. So on the right or on this side, I don't know if you're really going to be able to see it, but let us see. And I think that this would be a really nice um, size box for Christmas. And the reason why I chose Seize the Cake is because I kind of thought this was going to be big enough if you <laughs> if you had people over for a birthday party. You wanted to wrap up a bit of um, cake in there. You totally could. You'd have to wrap it in plastic first. But... Um, and what I did with the tag, this is just white baker's twine. And, whoops, I didn't want necessarily to interfere a lot with the clothes or anything like that, so I thought I would put a little bit of, um, oh, I forgot my, there we go, my snail, 
and I'm going to have it on that side. Cute. All right, folks, that's a really um, unique and fun large box that I made with the Stampin' Up! envelope punch board for you today. I hope you like it. If you want any of the supplies, you're more than welcome to come to my blog, sunstampin.com. That's with two N's. And below the video on my blog, I will have a link to all the, to the, my online store, any of the products that I've used today. So thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you next Friday.